Hello and welcome to episode 159 of NOLA Time. My name is Hobbit Veles and with me is the most interesting man in the world, Joel Young. What's good, No Low Time? Obed, pleasure to be with you, my friend. We are heading into a very nice uh, time of the year where things get a little bit cooler in Florida. We've got a few teases recently. Yeah, which, by the way, reminds me, next week there is no episode. So That is right. So you guys enjoy this one. We're being, <laughs> I'm a generous god. <laughs> so... <laughs> What's up, dude? So I, I want that breakdown on the PS5, uh, but but first of all, you know, how you doing, man? Man, I'm I'm living. I mean, you know, we we uh, like you mentioned, we're not gonna have an episode next week, um, so hopefully I'll use that time to spend more time with uh, with this one with back your precious. here. Yes, with my precious Gollum. <laughs> um, yeah, I I've got a lot a lot to talk about there. Uh, been spending plenty of time actually going back and watching young justice um been binging through that recently so that's been that's been quite nice uh still going back like i had mentioned to you before and, and watching more clone wars it's just such a good show you can rewatch, man like the rewatchability on it's so strong and, and we'll also talk about that shortly in a second here our, our, our amando breakdown because you and i i'm sure we've got plenty of thoughts on that yep. wonderful juiciness Got another episode coming out tomorrow, so I don't know. I I, I don't know what to expect, dude. But uh, I don't. I don't think it's gonna be that soon. I think we'll have no, a side no, mission no. tomorrow. A side yeah. quest. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what most people seem to speculate to. Yeah, we're gonna have a fix the uh, fix the 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 crow's nest. Right, right. Uh, the side, side quest. quest episode. Yeah. Yeah, man. But aside from that, dude, I mean, I my what's up is gonna consist mainly of uh, <laughs> of this guy because that's what I spent my time doing. Uh, ready for me to dive into it? Uh, yeah. I mean, let's rant about uh, about uh, Walmart again. Cause... Oh man, Ovid and, and Sony too. So, I feel for you, dude. I, I mean, I've been trying, dude. I've been trying, and and, and Walmart has been an absolute disaster um like basically like anything that walmart puts out scalpers are going to end up with it because they're not they don't have a captcha and and i want to talk about what happened today right because we were just talking about it off of the air but i i really want to talk about it and freaking Walmart had PS5s today, allegedly, right? I'm not. I don't know if this is true or not, because they can be full of crap. I don't know. Um, and and at two fifty nine, because they were gonna have them at three p.m. Two fifty nine, I refresh my browser. It's available. Hit add to cart. Go in the cart. Hit checkout. Do the spin, and and get the oh dear message at three p.m. It's three freaking p.m. When these things are supposed to go live, and now you can't get me to my checkout. And then three minutes later, I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to do this because they're probably gone by now, and I'm not going to suffer through this crap. Um, so that's the first rant. And then the second rant is Sony and their stupid queues. Like, why have a queue, right? When you get on the queue, right, when it, when it opens, and, and just wait there for 45 minutes and for for nothing right i mean who's getting these things from sony direct right because people what? like when, when people think about getting a ps5 they don't think about going through sony direct they go to walmart they go to target they go to best buy they go to retail or go amazon um but sony direct man and they they're having this q thing that it, it is just ridiculous i mean you sign in it says wait time expect that wait wait time more than an hour how the hell are we going to sit here just waiting for an hour? And then you wait for 45 minutes. Oh, th it's sold out. I was like, well, thanks a lot. I mean, wow, I've been sitting here for 45 friggin' minutes. I want to give you money. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not doing anything for me. Nice. Uh, but it's been it's been really bad. Um, I, I remember PS2 being bad, but it wasn't this bad because of, uh, uh, you know, uh, brick and mortar stores were more relevant back then. Um, PS3s were hard to get, but uh, you could still go in a GameStop and probably find one because of the price. But these things are nuts, dude. 
And then you see scalpers with like 20, 30, 40, 50 consoles at their place. Bragging and they're, about and they're it. getting robbed. Dude, Palpatine is like, he said it. Good is a point of view. If you're getting robbed and you're a scalper, you're like one of those people that, that deny the human malware and die. And so it's like, this is not real. And then they die. Zero sympathy from me, sir. I'm done. So, uh, yeah, I, I am I am living that life right now. <laughs> And, and then, uh, you know, the the scalpers that are reselling these things, it's atrociously high. I mean, we're, it's it's a joke. And we're Double, talking. Yeah. There's there's situations where I've seen PS5s for twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. Just the console, not yeah. anything extra. There's situations where you know you are getting bundles from companies, where again you're seeing the same thing, where it's ridiculous. There's uh, a, a company out in California, and I'd mentioned to you this one before, and I literally looked at it. I saw and it was like, I think they're saying that every week or, or something mm -hmm. they're going to be having these available or something at a certain time. And they're like $1,600. i am not even making this up. $1,600, you get like a chair a thrown in. I'm chair, like, yeah. Why are you doing this? <laughs> you need to move chairs that bad? Like, you know, next thing you know, they're going to be selling you, you know, your Thanksgiving turkey with your PS5, you know, and that turkey is going to be worth <laughs> way less than that PS5. <laughs> right. But price is gonna be like ridiculous well they're all we've already been through the great share short of 2020 when everyone yeah. started working from home and there was no chairs to buy out there <laughs> so 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 then and exactly so then so then the other funny thing about this is like you mentioned right the capture situation right so i, I you know you and i have been in contact throughout this whole thing you know i try and look out for you and i know you've been telling me how your how your situation is going up trying and I, I feel so bad seeing each time how ridiculous it is because I can only imagine how frustrating it has to be. Even if you weren't necessarily saying, I have to have this day one, even if you were just casually browsing, it's still frustrating. Um, but the point being, like you mentioned about the capture thing today with Walmart, I saw that that started to trend on on Twitter capture. I sent it over to you. Yep. And I don't know if you saw this, Obed, but some people were saying that they had like 15,000 captures showing up on there. So then you have someone like you who didn't have that problem, mm -hmm. but just couldn't even check out. Nope. Then you have other people who are saying, look, I had so many of these things bombarding me. They couldn't even hit the checkout button because the capture was blocking them over and over and over. I don't so know they, what, what the deal is there. It, and we've talked before 2020, yeah. you got to know how to website. Oh yeah. Know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Especially <laughs> right now. Come on. It's like you're doing deliveries. I bought an iPad today, today, six hours later, the iPad was freaking like they ring the bell. It's like, what the heck is this? this <laughs> bro, Best Buy. Wow. Best Buy. Wow. They figured it out. They they figured this crap out. They don't they don't need to come on. Uh, I mean then... I appreciate it. at least Sony when you log into the to the queue, right? You have to check the captcha, look mm -hmm. for the fire hydrants mm -hmm. on the little thing, and then and then you're in the queue, right? Which mm -hmm. is fine, right? And it, that's how it's supposed to be. But Walmart, dude, is a freaking free for all. It's like the Walmart is well, well, the Walmart dot com is like the real Walmart. You can go, <laughs> you can go to, you can go to a, a, a Walmart like the one down in Lake Nona, right? And and you can have a, a or the one in Claremont, and you can have a somewhat decent experience where you go in and you buy your stuff and you leave and everything's fine, right? You can end up at the one at East Colonial. And, and 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 it's a and it's a freaking zoo, and you know the things you see there, man. It's you know it's what it is, but I don't, I don't know. It's like it's like you don't know which Walmart you dot com you're gonna get. Are you gonna get the the Lake Nona Walmart dot com or are you gonna get the 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 Pine Hills one? You know what the wow. heck? And so it's well said, well said. I mean, and, and, and then, you know, like you mentioned about, you know, the places direct, okay, it's good that they have this queue. It's good that they have the captcha. It's not a bot thing. Like it's a situation where you just have, it feels like a randomizer, in my opinion, a placement. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's probably is some significance in being in within the, the first you know few seconds of when they drop it, but they don't tell you in advance, Hey, we're going to direct at 6 PM. You know, no, it just happens. Yep. But, um, one thing I've been thinking about is like, you know, what are what are some ways that Sony can learn from this and other people can learn from this of, of kind of creating a directive on, on how you put these things out? And, you know, some of the ideas I thought of is like, what if you literally had with the PlayStation Direct? Because this is a thought of mine, like how 
how the, these scalpers, right? So they have to be, and this is not PlayStation Direct, and PlayStation Direct, you have to actually have a PSN to be able to buy a PlayStation 5, right? Yep. So that's a good thing. Yep. To me, I don't know if this is the case because I haven't heard otherwise. It should it should literally if you've already purchased through their website or if you purchased through maybe Target or whatever and you have registered with your PSN a PlayStation Five console, you should not be able to purchase another console. Yep. Right? Because that there's some people who are clearly using this for a money game. I told you, Obed, it looked like it. And there's a very well good chance that on Walmart today I could have bought a PS Five and I already have one. So I don't know if it would have worked. I don't. I, we don't know. So but, here's here's what I think. What what I think this. And it's hard to do it like offline, right? If you post this thing on Craigslist, on Craigslist, and you meet someone at a parking lot and buy it from them, and you run that risk of you know either getting shot or ending up with a PS Five, it's it's a fifty fifty chance, right? At that point, um, uh, some some someone like eBay, uh, eBay should have people that like this type of of people that that sell. PS5 is and, and Xbox because Xbox is having the same problem, not the same scale, but they, they are sure. having experiencing somewhat of, sure. of the same problem. The same thing with the with the Nvidia cards with the 3090s and oh, the 3080s because yeah. we they they PC gamers had the same exact problem where all oh, these yeah. cards ended up in scalpers' hands and they're all on eBay for triple the price, and you know it's the exact same problem. So eBay should have a, a, a bet that. If you're selling a, a, a highly anticipated, highly look, sought after piece of, you know, either gaming hardware or technology, you should, if you input the, the serial number, that way on, on the system, you have to enter the serial number before selling it. That way the corporate knows who you are. Right. And, you know. Right. Because, bro, this needs to... There needs to be uh, some serious stuff. And I know, you can't like, just let it carry on. Like people will say, oh, well, that's capitalism and you know, whatever. But no, F you. you know, it no, because no, I started You're thinking just of... being an a-hole and it's not. You, know... <laughs> you don't care. Yeah. Yeah. But but I started thinking of like even like like Comic-Con. Not to, it's not the same thing. Right. But like with Comic-Con, there's a huge mass anticipation. Tickets go on sale. And the process they take is it's randomized. Like you, everyone gets in a queue at, at yep. the time that the queue opens. And then based on that queue, you are randomly assigned. It's not like I could get in if they open the queue at 10 a.m. I can get in at 10 a.m. If someone can get in at 1045 within the hour window that they open it, it's always a two-hour sale window. And they can get in at 1045 and still pass me who got in at 1001 because the system randomized. Yep. It's very, you know, hey, fair process. Most people, you know, you get a, you get a chance at some point, right? It's not this year, it'll be next year. Yeah. But but when you're talking about something like this, like how how can they take this to a place where also they make it more fair and you don't feel like, OK, first come for sort of survival of the fastest, which is really a bot because there's no way a human can get to it at this yeah. point. And the only way to do this is the very 20th century way of doing it. And it's inserting a human, a human element to the, the process. Absolutely. Because you can get that cue that Sony has, the Sony Direct has. And OK. You go into you log into your PSN, you get in the queue, right? Mm -hmm. Sony looks as like, okay, uh, this guy logs into PSN. He's been an active member of PSN for thirteen years. He's been, you know, you know, has this many trophies. I think this is a good candidate for us to allow him to buy a PS Five. Pick him. It's like, oh, this dude signed up to PSN yesterday. No trophies, no nothing. No, come Shady. on. Shady. Shady. Exactly. Some, some, some so, so you have you have to have some sort of QC process, agreed, or, or a curation process for these lines. But you know, they you want to fully automate everything, and you know that's fine. But at the end of the day, um, the the people that really want to one support your product and to enjoy your product are not able to um, because you. Sh chose to give someone that signed up for your system yesterday and probably is not going to ever even open the device. He's going to sell it. So, 
And I gotta tell people, please be nice to your local Walmart, Target, yeah, Best yeah, Buy yeah, 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 employees. Yeah. These guys are not the ones making the rules. Like you don't need to go calling one eight hundred and no. talking to the person behind the phone who they're just a customer sales support person. They can't change anything of how you know the 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 top people are making these decisions. You know, just be be nice about it. But you know, look, like we're voicing it here, saying, look, if, if there's somebody listening that is in a position of change. I would love to see them do something yeah. different because this is really a, a real stain and it will, it will not be forgotten. Anytime there's oh, a launch no. now, this will always be brought up because it's a yep. disaster. And it's very indicative of, of this 2020, man. Of no, people seriously. Feeling like yeah. broken, yeah. just, you know, chances and hope. And that's not a good way to go. And and, and I, we'd mentioned this before. I think there was, there's a reason why there's such an anticipation for, you know, these games for Xbox, for PlayStation, for the, these next gen consoles is because just like any Great Depression, any reset, there's something of entertainment that gives people a certain type of joy and happiness when they can't find it in other places. And I can tell you, this thing has brought a lot of happiness to me these last few days. And there's a lot of people out there that they need that, you know. And yeah. like, I I want more people to enjoy and experience that. And I, and I feel a little bad that this is the way it's going right now. So hopefully, change comes for the better. Right. Yep. Yep. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks if it doesn't happen in the next couple of weeks i'm just gonna give up and and get it next year and i'm not gonna yeah. i'm gonna wait until after christmas because i mean there's no point of like the, the 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 reason scalpers do this is because it's freaking christmas right it's because christmas yeah. season this is a, the hottest christmas gift so you got to do this crap so once it's over come you know february march whatever I'll, I'll i'll just probably go to best buy and find one and and that's probably gonna be the case um but go ahead and tell us about your happiness, sir. I really want to hear about that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, glad we got all that out of the way. But, you know, the thing about it is, like, I don't want to seem like I'm overhyping this thing or, like, I'm just, you know, like the Sony pony. But this is the happiest I've felt playing on a PlayStation console at launch. I mean, I've never had one at launch like this, but I've never felt this kind of anticipation. I don't know what it is. But I think it's what everyone's feeling, this this anticipation for this greatness. And when you actually finally launch it up and you finally get to actually play this thing, play on this thing, you you can act it actually lives up to these expectations. It's a very like I've mentioned it before when I unbox it, it's a very big machine. It's the size of your torso, but it it literally it literally feels like it's justified the size of it, because you can sense that this thing can do a whole lot of stuff. So when I was, so the other day I was, uh, you know, I was in the morning and I'm on the weekend and, you know, I decided just to jump in and play some, some, uh, Spider-Man or whatever. Right. And, and I, and I, uh, you know, launched up and, and I decided to play a little bit of Astro's playroom, whatever. And then I had Spider-Man up and I decided to switch between the two, right. That quick resume mm -hmm. dude, the time of waiting is over seconds dude i was swinging around new york i saw i saw someone post really funny something really funny on twitter um it was something like uh i just got a call from my friends uh saying that why am i why am i not returning their te texts it's like well there is like there's no way there's well there's no waiting in between uh video games right. anymore that's what, so, that's what we used to do. Hey, I'm going to go f fast travel to this location. I'll go on my phone for like 30 seconds a, a minute. Anything? Okay, you know, and then you put yeah. it down. Okay, the game's back. Yeah. That's not a thing anymore, dude. It's gone. Nice. Um, uh, You know, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys last time because I, I just jumped, we jumped into the show. But when you first boot up the PS5, it has a really special... Uh, introductory sequence. Some people have seen it already. Some people haven't. It's a really cool um, sequence that you only get once, and it doesn't do that again afterwards. Uh, so it's a, it's a first time boot up experience. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like I'm talking about those load times for me was a huge thing because I was like, okay, like you've got this this big boy uh, uh, that looks like he's beefy, and definitely, you know, I'm I'm playing this game. You have you you when you when you play Spider Man, you start him up. You get to actually adjust um, some of your settings. Uh, I actually ask you, like, do you want to be in performance mode or do you want to be in this? Like, it actually gives you the options and it tells you what it will do. Okay, this one will do HDR, but it won't have ray tracing. And this one will have this, but it won't have that. Like, you can actually adjust it to what's best for your TV and your hardware and, and just let it run. And it's 
It's gorgeous. Same thing for Assassin's Creed. I got to play, of course, that over the weekend as well. Um, How's same... that? I, I haven't heard a lot of buzz around it. Yeah, so I think it's I think it's getting overshadowed with there's a lot of games out right now at, at launch, dude. I mean, you could be playing Watch Dogs, you could be playing, you know, Call of Duty, yeah. and with the backwards compatibility, a lot of people are just going backwards before they're going forwards. But what's interesting, I've seen a lot of Ghost of Tsushima out there. It's like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait, to, dude. I've, I've yeah. got like I feel like I have so many games, and yet people are complaining about games at launch, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm getting it's been, going, yeah, I'm it's going a, backwards. It's a very, very it. decent. Yeah, it's a very decent launch lineup for sure. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, just just the PS Plus collection alone makes it worth it. Um, yeah. and 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 it's fun. I know I was on the record saying it in the past, saying that. Uh, oh, you know, I didn't. I'm not gonna buy a PS5 to play old games. I want to play new stuff. But man, was I wrong because it gives you a lot of joy, and it's very easy for you to bring over your PS4 stuff to PS5. That was another point of contention I talked to you about before, and I was like, Will I be able to easily bring my stuff over? How is this gonna work? Am I gonna have to go do something different for every game? No, you literally can just copy and move over, you know, over the cloud. And it's done. Took me maybe 30 minutes for me to copy over the stuff that I wanted. I didn't bring everything over because um, there was things I was like, I, I'm not going to need this data on here. So if I take up the space, but um, that's, a, that's another weird thing. Um, and I had seen it beforehand. Like you have to individually select every single game that you, that you want. Yeah. You brought or it up. All. Yeah. That, that's a really weird one. Um, but anyways, Assassin's Creed, you had mentioned, you asked me what I thought of it, you know, I honestly think that it's it's on par with the last one, which the last one was one of the best ones of, of the last generation of, of Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say it's on par with that one. I don't think um, I don't think the story is as captivating for me, um, but I think that because the gameplay it 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 is an Assassin's Creed game. Like I'm playing Assassin's Creed on on PlayStation Five, I'm happy just purely on that reason alone. But I'm not gonna be like this is great because I lo it's great because it's on next gen hardware and it's one of the franchises I love. Interestingly enough, uh, it is the um, best selling uh, game out of the Assassin's Creed franchises at launch um, in the history of the launch of the series. Yeah, so I think it came out at a, a re at a really good time, and uh, that game uh, it's cross gen as well right exactly so, yeah. right I, I that's what i literally bought was because unity was not PS4. cross gen you when unity came out it was just a, a ps4 xbox one thing and yeah cross gen was black flag black correct flag and unity was the year after yeah you're right after yeah. they rushed that yeah um which i i would be interested in playing that have you seen have you seen five, how it runs i have not seen how unity runs okay well, I saw I saw how it ran on Xbox on the Digital Foundry video. Yeah, exactly. So it, ran it runs perfect there. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would love to play that. Although I don't know if you heard Obed, supposedly Syndicate is not backwards compatible. What? Which is strange. That's like, I don't weird. know. I don't know how true that is that, or what. That's like a forgotten that. Assassin's Creed, though. Yeah. yeah, I have a shirt for it, but like it was, <laughs> it was one of those games that it, it very much just kind of blended between. You're like, was I playing Syndicate or was I playing Unity? Yeah. But um, uh, the one I saw running on PS5 today that looked really good, really good too. It's a uh, Fallen Order. Yeah, because it's running yeah, at like like either. locked 60 1080p and it looks fantastic. Yeah. So you know what I really want to play, and I'm not even into this franchise. To be in complete transparency, Call of Duty. Like I've seen some videos of that. That there's some like really really beautiful moments. I've got a list of stuff, dude. I've got God of War still downloaded on there that I need to play, yeah. but I need to finish Miles Morales, which is where I'm. I'm the deepest in that game. That, that I'm almost. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna make a lot of progress there, but I'm not rushing it. Like I love it so much. I don't yeah. want it to be done with. It's like, it's a great romance, man. I don't. Want, awesome. I. I, I love. I love this game. Um. So far, it's that's the game to me that anyone needs if they need to go next gen. It's, it. Spider-Man Miles yep. Morales. You have I heard. I heard some people enjoyed it more than the other Spider-Man. I agree. Yeah. And the reason being is it's more cinematic, and okay. the first one was cinematic. Like the first yeah. one was really good, but this one, like from the start to when you as you keep playing, it hasn't stopped feeling like I'm playing a movie. Like it's not very gamey. Like I don't know how the art, the, the direction of how this this whole thing came together, but it's very much like you're playing a movie. It's not. 
super gamey at all. There's a lot of cutscenes, a lot so of more uncharted mood transition. Yes, very more uncharted. Okay. That's a good 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 example. Okay. Um cool. so they, they really nailed that nailed that aspect of it. Uh yeah, dude. I mean I, I've got plenty of games to play, plenty of stuff to play. I think for me though, no load times was was number one, okay. one of the most like surprising features for me. Um, because we, you know, like we heard about it, but when you actually get to experience it, you're like, I was not expecting this. And then the other thing that I've said to you, uh, during the week was the dual sense is the best controller experience I've ever had, like, like ever at the moment. Um, and, right. and obviously like if you, you can plug a dual sense into like your PC and you're not going to have the same experience. Right. So it's all about the exclusivity, right? Yeah. Like it runs with PS5. It was made for this thing. But what they've done with that controller, it's it, like it doesn't stop making me feel like a little boy, like a little child as I play. Because, you know, between the sounds, the feelings, the resistance on those triggers, it changes in the middle of while you're playing. Like I'm playing a Spider-Man in random moments. I'm having to like, you know, use my webs to pull doors and I'm actually feeling the tension as I'm pulling and it's seamless. Like I'm not. Like I'm thinking about it because I'm like, oh wait, like I that's how I yeah. would think it would be if I was physically doing this myself. It's so well used. I hope that many um games utilize its abilities because that would be probably the biggest tragedy of it. Like Sony's given these developers an amazing tool. They've given something that's like they created the machine that slices bread, you know, like it's like it's game changer, dude. But you know, you got to figure out uh, hopefully, you know, the best ways to use it as developers and not just make it a, okay, the, the touch pads, just a, a button. Like when you play Spider-Man, you, know, you have to actually swipe it you know, for certain, certain scenes. And there's, there's a lot of interactivity that you have to blow on it. You have to shake, shake it and turn it. And as the sense, it just, there's a lot of things that you can do. And I hope it it's used. It's not gimmicky because the technology is so well. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there, there, there could be some really good implementations. Like when Horizon comes out, when God of War two comes out, uh Ratchet and Clank, they can do some some really cool stuff with it too. Yeah. That's awesome. That's and, and that's what I've heard too. Like it seems like consensus that everyone's talking about the controller. Like even Xbox was like, Oh yeah, Xbox runs at three frames per second better on this game. Uh, like DMC, right? I sent you the uh the yeah. digital foundry comparison to, with the DMC five. And it's like a, you know, a three to five, this is like not even a five. It's like a, like two to three frame more on a um, frames per second, more on the Xbox, Xbox. versus the, the PS five. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nominal. And I knew, and we've talked about it, how this difference is going to be nominal and yeah, and, and not, not really a big difference. Uh, but when it comes to immersion, that's where Sony like took it a, a, a yeah. level up on that one and you know like i look at like this box and i see things like 120 frames per second and 8 8k and whatever and like we're not even tapping the surface yet dude like I, i'm playing right now and i'm like there is so much more we're gonna have to get better tvs like games are gonna change it's this thing is is made beautifully for the next generation and i'm very excited about it it's not me trying to sell sell this thing but i'm just saying i'm having such a great experience on my own that this is the kind of feelings that i'm having Stop selling it as to i me, think Joel. about it <laughs> if only i could actually sell it to you no, don't sell it you to can't me. buy you can't for buy a thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's good that's good um yeah. yeah i've i've heard great things about uh about it any questions about, about lot, it at all anything more, that you I, want to know i want to stay spoiler free so okay i'm good okay um yeah, like 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 we saw like Xbox came out and and there was a lot of buzz surrounding it, right? Uh, but this thing came out and everyone's still talking about it. And yeah. Xbox is like, oh yeah, I'm enjoying my Xbox, but holy crap, Miles Morales, yeah. And that that seems to be the problem with Xbox right now, and that's the same thing that we talked about where they just don't have the content. And uh, yes, they have some exclusive stuff that they brought over from Game Pass, but uh, but not at this level. Like I've seen a lot of Mile stuff. I've seen some a lot of Demon Soul stuff. A lot of Box Snacks. Like, Even stuff. Godfall, dude, like looks good, dude. Go looks good. It, the reviews are are kind of crappy, but but it looks it looks good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm curious what cool, PS Plus is going to be next month. Like, how's that going to work just for both PS4? Because technically, PS4 games are PS5 games. So, how are they going to do this? It's I probably just going to be some two PS4 games that you can play on PS5. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'm not, I don't mean that in the sense of it being PS4. I just mean the sense of like what games. Like, is this going to be like Merry Christmas or is this going to be like, <sighs> you know, we gave you guys, you know, a new console. Take it easy now. Dang. Okay. So, I, th- I think like, to blow people to blow people's socks off, they should do Horizon. What? And I mean, Horizon's ten dollars for the Ultimate Edition right now, at Best Buy, for the or the Complete Edition. So, so it should be Horizon. And man, something third party, some. Uh, <laughs> Jedi uh, Fallen Order. <laughs> nah. Too soon. That's too new. Yeah, yeah. And EA is like, I mean, EA did Battlefront with them. They think they're Nintendo, but Battlefront's already like two years old, right? So, it's true. It's true. Yeah, I mean, it has to be. It has They'll to throw be... in like a sports game or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, know. they probably do like a and like a jets, Madden or something. Let jets keep power up, and it's one of those like little ones that no one cares about that I never <laughs> add to my to my uh, uh, to my list because. Yeah, who cares? Um, <laughs> but cool, man. Cool. I am glad you're enjoying it. I know that I will get the chance in the near future. Absolutely, so I absolutely. am not. I I ain't even salty, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying uh, punishing myself with Bloodborne. So, I'm good. Do you want to hear about how that's going, sir? Tell me about it. Okay. Um. So I don't die every every four steps that I take now. So that's good. <laughs> so I've gotten the hang of it. Nice. Um, I'm doing actually pretty good based on based on what I, where I am right now. I'm I know, and I went back and compared it to like playthroughs. I'm about halfway done with the game, so it's still still quite a bit to go. Uh, the game's pretty long. Uh, if, if it's your first time, like I'm, I've been watching, I've been following a playthrough. Uh, that's a very thorough playthrough and it's only like 10 and a half hours uh, but the guy knows exactly where to go and what to do and I'm I don't <laughs> I'm like figuring out stuff and trying to stay relatively spoiler free I've, I've already had some things spoiled but it's fine I'm not crying about it it's, it's a five-year-old game so I'm I understand right um but it's good it's good it's like <sighs> It's like the Castlevania game that we never got, basically, and I and I and I know it's cliche, and I've heard people say it, but it, it does feel like, uh, like if this would be called Castlevania, Castlevania colon Bloodborne, I yeah, it would it would it would have fit right in because it 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 feels really feels like a Castlevania game, um, uh, it's very good it, again. And and the, the things that the thing that that's very unfortunate, Joel, is that I think that uh, a lot of passion and a lot of planning went behind this game when uh, when it was getting made, uh, and and unfortunately, this game is not for everyone. It's the same. It's the same thing that I say about Persona, because it's 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 very dense, very lore rich, and it has tons of stuff to do, tons of things to discover. But unfortunately, these games are not for everyone, um, and it's sort of sort of the same thing, right? Um, the The difficulty definitely is a barrier of entry. Like those first two three hours that you play this game, is is tough, man. Um, I mean, and I, and I, it's which is interesting, right? Because I've brought up Breath of the Wild, um, and I've said that the first three hours are really tough. It's basically, it, it really does feel like, like that, like I would say that Breath of the Wild to some extent is as difficult as this game is, the first three hours, I, and after that, after you start figuring out stuff, then it's that that's when you really start enjoying the game. Um, whereas Persona, it's not like there's no no not really a, a better difficulty there, uh, but you do have. Uh, at least an hour and a half that you are getting uh, a story dump at the beginning of the game and not really doing anything. So 
It's kind of like that. Um, it's good. It's good. Um, I mean, we'll, I, I'll keep playing it for sure. Uh, Zelda comes out tomorrow. Uh, was the uh, Age of Calamity. So it comes out tomorrow. I pre-ordered it, so it's coming in. Uh, so I'll play that over the weekend. I will definitely play some Bloodborne tomorrow and see where that goes. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty much it, man. I finished season two of The Voice. It was good. Those three, those last three episodes. Whoo! You uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's a uh, it's very interesting stuff that these guys are doing with that show, and I mean I've I've never followed the comics, so I, I'm I'm you know basically going in blind, but it's now that season two is done, Joel. If you could go go check it out, I would say watch both seasons. It's. You think they're? It's I, nuts, I haven't bro. read or anything. Are are they setting up for season three? They are. They are. I would think it's, yeah. it. seems very commercially successful. <clears throat> so I'd imagine they they are setting up for a season three, because um, I mean, more more than the first one, right? Because uh, the first the first. I mean, there there is a cliffhanger here too, but I think the cliffhanger on on the first season was like, oh yeah, season two is coming because this is a big cliffhanger. This one ends on. Like it's super ambiguous. It's like cliffhangery, but but you could end it here, right? And and probably people are not gonna be too salty about it. Um, but they already said that season three is coming, so it it, it is coming. Um, but man, check it out because it's like wow. <laughs> it's again, this show. There's nothing sacred in this show. You gotta be prepared for that. It's a it's a wild ride. I, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, Joel is stuck, Mando, man. Oh boy, cause uh, Whew. that episode last week, man. You said you just texted, just texted me, fire. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a great episode. Um, and again, I I stand by my words when when I said that. That 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 table, in that bando, uh, what was it the the retrospective thing they did, for the for the Mandalorian, that table's where the future of Star Wars is. It's John Favreau and Bryce Dallas Howard and Dave Filoni, that's where it lies, cause cause this was it. Like this is part of that thing I mean, coming cl- together. I mean, clearly we're seeing that, right? Taika Waititi's yeah. getting his movie. I won't be surprised if um. Uh, um, gosh, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. The director of Dope, uh, um, you know that he also ends up getting. Like these people are all people that are very much now associated with the successful side <laughs> of Disney Star Wars, and that's what Disney's going to take notice on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do have one thing, one more thing, but we'll talk about after Mando. Okay, okay, because we we already started. So, um. Yeah, well, we're gonna go into some spoilers. Um, I'm, I mean, as soon as I saw the title come up, the Harris, I was like, "It's Bo, like Bo's gonna be in this episode," and and we all knew, right? Um, we we speculated that Sasha Banks was gonna be Sabine, but then after after the first time I saw her in the uh, in the ship, I was like, "It's not gonna, she's not gonna be Sabine." Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, I mean, Baby Yoda gets eaten and uh, saved by uh, by the real Mandos. Um, and, and we get to see a live action Bo-Katan and spot on. It's great. It's fantastic. I mean, it's the same actress. Come on. Um, uh, and, and it was great. It was great. I think her, uh, um, they really did a good job as, at making her a badass in her own way. And it was great. Um, you know, we, we saw more of the empire out there, you know, trying to, yeah. to get weapons to, different eras of the galaxy and try to figure out stuff right um and we saw like stormtroopers actually with with uh new armor because we saw season one like we saw the like the older armor so we we did we did see death troopers when when muff gideon showed up but um but more of what we what we know you know stormtroopers are like um funny the the ship I remember those ships from uh, Clone Wars. I know. Yeah, not yeah. Clone Wars. I'm sorry, from Rebels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So transports from Rebels. Yeah. So, uh, so that was pretty cool. 
Uh, overall, I think it was great. They really did capture Clone Wars like a like like they gave us they gave us um they gave us a taste of 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 the Clone Wars show in live action, and I really enjoyed it. It was great. It was great. I mean, a mixture of Clone Wars and and Rebels, right? They sort of did did the did the thing, the full universe. Yeah, exactly, exactly, full universe. Um, yeah, I think they overall did a great job, and then uh, we got the name drop. And it's it's confirmed that um, that Mando is going to be looking for Ahsoka. Probably not in the next episode. It's going to be another side quest, more than likely. But who knows, right? Um, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll wait and see tomorrow morning to see what that's about. But yeah, man, I don't know if you have any other impressions. Uh, Quarrens are, are are tricksters. It's like you can't trust a Quarren. Come on. But uh, yeah, I, it, it was great. I mean. If you want to share anything else that you have to say, man, it's great. Yeah, I mean, to echo similar to what you said about, you know, Clone Wars being uh, very much now relevant in this show. Like beforehand, you know, you had Clone Wars always, always be canon to the movies and canon, right, for, for the universe that we would see. Even in um, sequel trilogies, there's, there's plenty of references. Um, but now having a Bo-Katan crossover – you know, being the first really major animated live cro- to live action crossover character, having the Death Watch show up on screen, they they are using this now in a way of really solidifying the relevance and importance of that show. Yep. So now, like, there's a lot of people that, like, and I don't want to sound like an elitist, but like, you know, for a long time, there's many people that we've said, like, you if you say you like Star Wars and you like these movies. You need to have watched Clone Wars. Like you just, you just gotta do it. I understand the first couple seasons, graphics are really old. Like I get it's, it, it's right? Rough. Like the first season is rough. It did, yeah. It has yeah. not aged aged well from that standpoint, but it is all worth it in the end. It all comes together so beautifully, and it pays off very well, and will change your perspective on many things in Star Wars and movies, according, including, of course, our love for Ahsoka and our love for the Mandalorians. Of course, then you start going into Rebels as well, like you mentioned, Obed. That that's also very, very relevant too, right? But um, so, yeah, so now when you have someone like bo show up and she's she's talking, I mean, there's lines in there, dude, that is like so on par with the animated stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. like if you don't know what she's talking about, like you haven't seen this stuff or just don't remember because it is like sw- like they're going Star Wars sweaty. They were not holding back lore at all. No. Yep. Thing, right. So. You know, like the whole idea that Mandalore is basically destroyed and gone, that was a big uh, drop as well, right? That, that because if you remember at the end of Rebels, you know, obviously Bogotan has the dark saber. So what happened for Moff Gideon to get it? What goes on there? Many can assume that the Empire just went and just went havoc on Mandalore. Yeah, and they had these guys escape, and something happened there to Moff Gideon getting it and whatever. But you know. You know, Bogotan has a very great line in there where they're talking about how it's destroyed and, and like you can't go there because it's also the way they say that the Empire like cursed it to that that no one else could return or some kind of words that, that's used. Yeah, he said he line. said that the planet is, planet is cursed and no one can live there. Uh, Mando says it to, right. to Bo. And Bo's like, and, yeah, that's not and, technically and, true. And, and, yeah. Right. And then they respond saying, like, don't believe everything you hear. And it's yeah. like. Man, I don't, I don't know what what happened there. But cool seeing Moff Gideon show up finally on so, screen there. So here's what I think, right? I, I have a I have a theory about that because I thought about it. Uh, Mandalore was part of Operation Cinder from uh for battle from Battlefront. Mm-hmm. Like after Palpatine died, <laughs> that was part of one. That was one of the planets that Palpatine wanted re- neutralized in case uh you know he he died. Because he knows, you know, that if the Mandos were to join any other type of rebellion, he would have no chance of of reviving himself. Let's say, let's say, let's say the thing, the controversial, the controversial thing, right? Because it's canon, whatever. Um, Do you I, know that the Battlefront actress this is just a fun, fun uh, little thing that she, she actually has- was in? This episode as yep. well, so that's interesting. You mentioned that because is there going to be more Battlefront ties in of any kind? I think so. There, there, there may be. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, that she's going to have a, a cameo, like a full on, like her character 
is gonna have a is gonna have a cameo here because it, it's it the, the timeline works mm-hmm. pretty good so I think I think it really it really works um so I expect to see that um like dude I, I'm not I'm not I, I will not be shocked at all that we see Luke at some point and you well, know. well that's that's just it man so supposedly like there was there's there was a discussion like on one of the investor calls is the investor calls that they have and like you know bob made the statement around like you'll be surprised of what content that's from disney plus ends up making it to the theaters or something along those lines i was like what do you mean like from disney plus the theater like how does that work i think that you know they're all in on Disney Plus, and we'll talk about streaming in a little bit. But, you know, I do think that there's a chance that something like this could have, like, three or four seasons and then them have a movie on the big screen that ties some of this together. Like the battle for Mandalore or something, dude. And Luke is there, and it gives us everything that we wanted, dude, that we didn't get in these other sequel movies. Yeah. They could do that. Yeah. Yeah, they could. Because technically Ahsoka is not a Jedi as far as we know that she didn't go back. She left the Order. We don't know that she went back or not entirely. Did she finish um, her training? With right. Who, with who did she finish so, her training? So handing yeah. the child over to her makes partial sense, but it, it's only a step closer to the Force. Like, she needs to then take him to, like, like you know, Luke or someone else. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, really excited. Really, really excited for, for Mando. Like, this season has not disappointed yet, so I am very much looking forward to tomorrow. I want to yes. get to watch that episode. Uh, Joel, I did watch a movie. Uh oh, was it oh, a good movie? Oh, it's Dark Phoenix. Oh, you did it, man! I did you it. Listen to me with Fantastic Four. You didn't listen to me with Dark Phoenix. Okay. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as, as Fantastic Four. Oh no, no, that's, no, no! That's yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four Fan is a level. Stick, it's it's way worse, way, yeah. way, way, way worse. Yeah, that I can agree. I can agree. Um, it's still not good. I think that, but that there's like it, it, what's really disappointing is that this movie is supposed to be the closure of the Fox X Men series, right? That's a huge, huge bummer because the movie is just so boring dude it's the it's just boring it's a nothing burger yeah and then Quicksilver gets knocked out like the best part of those X-Men movies gets knocked out and then you have a very emotionless Cyclops um, I mean, it was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be trash, right? I, but I thought it was gonna be like fan four stick bad, and it's not that. No, bad. no. Like, it, I, like it's better. Problems. It like it's better than like Catwoman and all this stuff, right? That came you know, before. Or like that, the, no question. Which is not hard right? to do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no question that's you know fan four stick Catwoman and all these movies that had come out, like you know. Uh, that Punisher War Zone and all that other stuff. Oh yeah. Um it, it is just boring, man. Boring, 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 boring. And then it's like nothing happens and then stuff happens and then the train sequence happens. It's like oh, that was pretty freaking cool. Um and then But at that point you don't care. But at that point you don't care because nothing had happened until that point. And it didn't make any sense. And that's it. It does. It just abruptly ends. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw because it was free. So yeah, I'm good. You know, and there was nothing else on TV, so I watched it. It's fine. Yes. I also watched the that Charlie's Angels like girl power movie. I, like, I liked it. Dark, to be honest with you, Dark Phoenix is better. I think. I actually see. I I feel opposite, dude. I actually like Charlie. <laughs> you, you like it because Naomi <laughs> Scott is in that movie. <laughs> You can watch that, that, Naomi Scott just reading tweets all day, and you'll. Be I mean, fine he's with it. saying it. I didn't. I say it. I but I mean, I'm just saying. Like, look, it's a. I'm just saying it's a better movie in my opinion. I, one I can laugh at, the other one I might frown at. So okay, okay, take it how you want. <laughs> okay, all right. 
I got a funny story for you. Before <laughs> before we go into the oh, topics, boy. we don't have much, but we'll we'll go into it. Um, m- my wife attempted to watch Cats. Oh no! She watched like five minutes and turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> And that was a movie that she actually actually wanted to. Oh, I want to watch Cats. Put Cats on five minutes. How do I stop it? Because <laughs> she's still figuring out the uh, the the new TV set. Right, the new box. Yeah. yeah, the new box. How do I stop it? I don't, I don't want to watch this movie. <laughs> she she put it on, and she's the person like, yep. you didn't have to ask to mm-hmm. stop it. She was like, get this off my TV. Yep, it was great. <laughs> Oh, you probably were so proud. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna go record a podcast, lady. Because uh, he was like, this was like at eight o'clock tonight. So, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was great. Um, well, we we talked. We were talking about streaming. Um, Joel, we got a bombshell yesterday that that uh, Wonder Woman 1984 is going to have, I guess, a hybrid release. Um, Christmas Day, HBO Max, and uh, and some movie theaters are going to be having the movie as well. Um, unexpected, but the right move, I think. Unexpected, but welcome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I told my wife, and she was really excited about nice about watching it. I was like, "Yeah, we got HBO Max for like the next two months, so we can watch it." Oh, cool, cool, yeah, 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 yeah. We got the trial, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fit in uh, uh, Watchmen in there somewhere. Hopefully. Very good. So, because I heard, I heard great things about it. So. Oh, very good show. Yeah. Um, um but yeah, man. Go ahead. yeah, yeah. That was a big one because, like, I mean, if you if you've been following No Load Time from like March of this year throughout this this whole year, man, like you know, you and I have been talking nonstop about okay, this one gets delayed, that one gets delayed. And our thoughts on streaming, no streaming, why it makes sense, why it doesn't make sense. And what like has happened over time is like things that didn't seem likely are now completely all on the table because it's gotten that bad and it's been that long. Uh, and clearly this is a move to increase um, subscribers to HBO Max. Obviously, that's a, it's a, it's a smart move as a business. Um, and I, like... As I thought about it more and more, I was like, it would be really awkward for it to be moved yet again, like to summer, even though, even though like, it, you know, like it would have been nice to have had that big wide release and then let it make its money and, and set up, you know, future DCU stuff. You can do it at home and people will want to watch it. And what better time Christmas? Like, that's brilliant, man. Yeah. Everyone's going to be home. Everyone's going to want to, you know, to watch this thing um it's a great idea hey you know get your family around we're gonna watch wonder woman like and hbo max that's been a, an issue of theirs is, is that I, the content's really cool for like the adults but for like the family it's not really there yeah um you know so like this is one of those things that you can actually put on there and say cool this is for like the whole family now so it totally totally makes sense um and i like that idea of the hybrid release but i don't know if you saw the 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 press release when they when they put it out um, but they, I read on Variety, but they put on there that it was only going to be available for a month on HBO Max. Really? I so did not see that. Yeah. So it's very similar to the Harry Potter situation where Harry Potter, you know, was available at the launch. And then we basically have like, like you know, just a, a few days or whatever later and all of a sudden it's gone from HBO Max. And they'd use that as a big like promotional piece, like come here and watch these movies here or whatever. And it hasn't been back since. And I'm assuming that this has to do with licensing, that there's some type of licensing thing situation going on Probably. here. Maybe, you know, Warner had to deal with someone else for this movie already in place. That it has to kind of come through. I don't know how that works. We'll find out. Um, but it's probably a movie theater thing. Yeah, exactly. More than probably likely. movie theater thing. It's like an AMC more. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Like they're the ones yeah. that have been, they've been like really vocal about. Right keep themselves alive yeah but you know having it's rough but having it still even just for one month you christmas is the time to do it like that's the way you're going to get the most views and money yeah so brilliant on their part but obed not to switch you know movies but you know black widow instantly started trending you know that when this news got announced i jump on twitter see black widow trending it's because everyone's instant reaction is we love wonder woman yeah. But when is Black Widow coming out? Because what's the deal here? And 
just like a couple days ago, YouTuber files are talking about some. There was rumors, um, stuff that that they that's being said put out there about that supposedly, um, like it very much is a plan for Disney to to now move this to Disney Plus. But then today, like there's an article from I saw from Screen Rant or from somewhere else. I can't remember exactly deadline. I don't remember where exactly it was, but basically, um. Disney saying, no, we're not going to be putting this on Disney Plus. We're putting a lot of movies that were going to be in theaters are going to go to Disney Plus. So maybe like a free guy and those kind of things are going to go. They will find out. Yeah. But like they're still saying that they're very much on target about having Black Widow in theaters. Here's what I think about all this. Wonder Woman comes out Christmas. The reason they had to do is they had they had that six week window, right? That, to, that they had to announce the theaters what their decision was. Between now and that time, we've had positive news about vaccinations. That's just a reality. I think had the vaccination news come out at a different time, it might have made Warners think differently. I think Disney, seeing the news that they are seeing, are seeing an opportunity to make a billion dollars because it could be another Black Panther situation or whatever where they can make a lot of money and no risk it. That's just my thoughts. We'll see. Yeah. Could still go to Disney Plus. It's uh, it, it 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 could they could try they could try Mulan, but we we all saw that Mulan didn't really work the way at least the way they wanted it to work. It just didn't, uh, and it was unfortunate. I mean, you saw it and you said it was pretty good. Uh, I heard yeah, people, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard I heard some people say on like Facebook, it was like, oh, I watched Mulan. It was pretty good. You know. Yeah. Uh, wonder when that's hitting uh, like Blu-rays. But that's that, that's a remake movie. Like it's not like. Yeah. Well, spoiler alert, kids, Mulan, uh, you know, yeah, Black, yeah, Widow's oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. an, Black Widow's an event. Like, you put that on there. Yeah. All right, kids, this is the next Marvel Studios, you know, installation. Yeah, which is funny because I wasn't really hyped for that movie, but then the, that second trailer really, really did, did, did it for me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so. Uh, Joel, are there any news about uh, Justice League that came out? I know that there was like a, like a trailer thing yes. out, but I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, new trailer out, really cool. Most, uh, you know, starts out, if you may not recognize that it's this, this, a different trailer, but it's in black and white, uh, coloring again, showing a lot more better coloring on it. Still has the same Halloween song, great. But a um, bunch of really cool new shots. I think to me, they're showing a lot, which I understand why, because they want, people to know this is a very this different movie different, and, yeah. and keep reminding them about what it is. It's cool. Um, uh, there's <laughs> it was 150 minutes or something that they said that that's completely new for this movie or something crazy okay. thing. So, um, cause the reshoots are not that long there's like 20 minutes of reshoots. No. Yeah, exactly. So, the, yeah. so it's pretty cool. How much of uh, footage the stuff using. that got cut, bro. That's, that's what got cut. Jared Leto is back as Joker. We talked about this already, yeah. but What's interesting is he's not going to look the way he looked to Suicide Squad. They're changing his appearance. <gasps> really? So, so the Snyders are fixing it. They're fixing his look because that that was a little too. I think that was the. Like it wasn't even. It's it supposed to be like a gangster, but it, like it looked like a Joker. Like so, a Joker so I heard. Gangster. So I heard. A... I heard that Bursa Prey has a picture of him that, and he looks different in the picture. Yes. Like he it, got it, like soft rebooted in between movies. And they never actually show directly Jared Leto's face. Yeah. It's like it could be him. So that's where you get the idea. Like, yeah, it's yeah. definitely changed. But um, that's cool that he's been back. They couldn't get Margot Robbie apparently to come back. So my, the, that they wanted her to be back in, but like a scheduling conflict or something. Okay. She's doing that Parts of the Caribbean movie. But, you know, I think that has to do with um, the remake of the Jason Todd scene that, that, that supposedly is going to be in this as well. Death and Family. Um yeah, a lot of really, really cool, cool stuff that uh, keeps coming out about this. Very exciting new pictures coming out of, you know, what Deathstroke looks like. Deathstroke does not look the same as when he took his helmet off and the end of the, of Whedon's Justice League. He's got now a, a you know, a mohawk or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's there's some cool stuff going on. I, I can't wait to yeah. see. I saw the Steppenwolf again, the close up shot that those uh, out there. The graphics aren't like great on it, but I mean you have to understand that there's they're not putting most of the budget into the look of Steppenwolf. Like it's, it's I saw I saw people say he looks worse. It's like you got it. Are you drunk? No. I know who you voted worse. for. <laughs> <laughs> you just judge them just on like, the comment. Bro, come on. <laughs> you really? judge them based on a Steppenwolf comment. That's yeah. pretty, pretty yeah, accurate. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's like which one looks better? Oh I know who you're voting for. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> no, it clearly it looks better. Come on, guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah I look does. for. I look forward to seeing. I think. I think one of the the coolest parts for me was just just knowing that 
you know, Superman's gonna come on the black suit. Like that's already enough for me to be hyped. Yeah, yeah. For sure, man. So I'm gonna bring up the site so we can go over the uh the nominees for the uh game awards. Actually before we do that, uh there's only uh one more piece of news that I wanna talk here and then uh we do game awards and then there's one little thing after that. Um but uh Capcom had a, a really bad cyber attack this week, or I guess last week and then this week it was revealed uh what was uh what was obtained. There was a bunch of financial stuff. Uh, some game release dates and some future plans that got leaked out there. Um, allegedly, one of those plans is that uh, Street Fighter VI is going to be a cross-gen title coming out for all consoles. So it's it's not going to be a, a PS5 exclusive. Um, it's going uh, Street Fighter is going back to being available on everything, uh, and not only on everything, on everything, everything, because it's going to be PS4, Xbox One, PS5. Xbox Series X and PC. Uh, apparently, that's the, the the huge leak that they had uh, with rumored crossplay in between all five consoles or platforms, I guess. Uh, if, if that's true, very good news. Um, get a bigger uh, install base for the game. Uh, the game as I don't know if I brought it up before. I, I, I know that I've talked about uh, Yoshino Riono uh, not being at uh, at Capcom anymore. Um, uh, or not at Capcom, but not, not involved with, uh, with, with Street Fighter anymore. Uh, did he actually leave Capcom? I can't remember. Um, well, rumor is that Ono was actually pushed out of that role. Um, apparently, the son of the when do you remember back in the early 2010s when capcom was doing like this lost planet 3 and that dmc devil may cry like reboot came out the edgy yeah. one and all that stuff uh that was all kg inafune kenny kg inafune we know we all know that he technically got fired from capcom uh, they brought in a new CEO to basically turn things around. Capcom started turning around, and and I guess the the son of the CEO uh, has always been very passionate about Street Fighter, so they actually gave him the project. Uh, so he was the one that allegedly pushed Ono out of his role and rebuilt a team to basically rebuild Street Fighter again. Um, based on what Ono was doing on Street Fighter Six, based on rumors again, it was not good. So that's why they took over the project. Um, that's why the the this new guy has been on the new videos that have been out for uh, like Champion Edition and announcing characters and whatnot. Like he's been really really involved with uh, not only the gameplay elements in the game itself, but with the community, which is great. So, uh, and, and Ono was also very involved with the community. So, but this guy, he seems to be doing a really good job. Um, but yeah, that's the rumor for now. If, if it's to be a cross gen game, Joel, this is probably going to be a late, like 2021 game. Maybe. I mean, there's yeah, like two or, time. Yeah. There's like three more characters coming out for street fighter five. Or four more characters. Yeah, they're still not know. done. Yeah. So this could very well be a 2022 game. Who knows? So, so I guess we'll wait and see. How uh, excited are you a bit for that? Um, I'm excited. Okay. Uh, I think I'm more excited for Guilty Gear. For uh, um, what's the uh, what's it called the the new one that's coming out? Um, nah, I was gonna say XR because XR's been uh, uh, strive, strive, strive. Guilty Gear Strive. Um, so uh, I think I'm more excited for Guilty Gear than the Street Fighter, to be honest with you. But just because it looks so different than anything else that's out there. Um, I, I guess we'll wait and see. And I have to see it. I have to see it in motion to uh, to see if, if I'm really sold on it. Uh, but like I said, Game game of, game of uh, game Awards nominations are out there. Uh, and, and we'll go through this uh, pretty quickly here. Uh, Game of the Year, Joel, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Shima, Hades, Animal Crossing's New Horizons, 
and The Last of Us Part 2. As much as I love Final Fantasy VII Remake, Joe. Okay. I got to give this one to Ghost of Shima. Okay. I th- that, this is really the person I wanted to know their re- opinion on. Because for me, okay. like, you know, I, I, it's a coin toss, man. Like, I, you know, I haven't played the remake and I haven't played Ghost of Tsushima. I heard Hades is really good. Okay. And I haven't played uh, The Last of Us. Um, and uh, I haven't played out. I, I, well, those are the only two that I've actually played. So, uh, but I, I, I heard Hades is really, really good too. So, but I got to give this one to Ghost Shima. Like, based on, based on what I played this year, I, uh, I got to give it to it. Cause it, it did, we talked about how authentic that game was and yeah, it's so good. Best game direction. And that again, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost Shima, Hades, Half-Life Alex, and The Last of Us Part Two. This was a tough one because I think that everyone involved with, uh, I think I think Final Fantasy VII was very 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 well uh, well directed uh, and well paced too. Um, Ghost of Shima, there's some funky stuff with the cutscenes, uh, so I really don't know on this one. And Half Life Alex, that's a VR game. I'm probably not, and I'm probably never gonna play that game, uh, but we'll we'll have to wait and see on this one. I'm not really sold on 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 any of them per se but i'll probably give it to ghost Shima. not animal crossing not animal crossing still no uh best narrative uh 13 sentinels final fantasy 7 remake again ghost Shima again hades again last of us 2 again uh again ghost for me <laughs> it's really good I guess it really makes good. sense. Yeah, I guess really good. Um, and I love Final Fantasy VII Remake. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But I think that Ghost of Shima was special. It was one of those things. It was one of those games that are that are that are just, just special. So, uh, best art direction: uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake again, Ghost of Shima again, Hades again, Last of Us Two again, and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So, so we're seeing a pattern here, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hades looks really good, and like I really like the art design in that game. Ghost Shima is really authentic, right? Um, but I, I think I think the the art design in Hades, um, and and all in all of the super giant games. Uh, I talked about uh one of the games of the the generation. I forgot to give it a shout out. Um. And, uh, and and that was that other uh, super giant game. Uh, oh my god, I always forget the name of that game because I confuse it. I'm gonna look it up. Fact checking. I am Why? so upset oh, right now no that I keep time. forgetting the 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 name of that game, dude. Transistor. Um, that was that was supposed to be a shout out uh, for my games of the generation because that game is really really good, really really good. Um. I loved it, and and I loved uh, Bastion as well. So uh, I think Hades on this one, best score and music, uh, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, Order of the Blue is Last of Us Part Two. So again, we see uh, the pattern. The music on Final Fantasy VII Remake is outstanding, bro. Outstanding. It's really good. Uh, uh, but I've seen what Doom has been doing uh, music wise, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. Best audio design, Doom Eternal, Half Life Alex, Ghost of Shima, Resident Evil 3, Last of Us Part 2. Uh, again, the pattern, Resident Evil 3 has really good sound. Like we, we talked about it in the Games of the Generation. Again, uh, how uh, how the sound on uh, on RE2 was phenomenal. But uh, yeah, uh, 3 gets it. Um, on the other uh, games that we have here best action game again doom hades half-life neo 2 streets of rage 4 on this one you know which one's gonna be my choice <laughs> this it's like it's obvious uh best action adventure and here's when when things get really tricky joel because it's assassin's creed valhalla goes shima yeah. miles yeah. jedi fallen order or in the willow wisp and last of us part 2 so I know you would pick Miles. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I would pick I would pick Ghost of Shima, but I haven't played Miles. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I, I I think I think Ghost of Tsushima could win it if I would have played it, but there's, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Miles made it the in the nick of time, but uh, Star Wars fan, uh, we talked about it last week or two weeks it's ago. A, it's a great game. It is a fantastic game. Uh, best RPG. Um, I mean, there's an obvious choice here, and it's Persona Five Royal. <laughs> can't can't. But it's Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, Genshin Impact, uh, Wasteland 3, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, best fighting game, it's uh, basically the same as always. So Grand Blue Fantasy, because there's no Guilty Gear this year. Uh, Street Fighter V Champion Edition, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Uh, One Punch, uh, I'm sorry, One Punch Man, and Under Night in Birth. So... I'll probably give it to Street Fighter on that one. Uh, and uh, I think that's more, that's the more relevant ones. The uh, all that mobile games, best host, best esport personality, and all that stuff. I really don't care about that. Yeah. So, uh, so we can just move along. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think it's pretty good. It's a yeah, pretty good I list overall. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this shows. Was it December 10th? I think it is. Uh, it something like that. It is going to be on. Let's uh see. So I'm on the website. If it loads, the west the website's acting up. Everyone's on there because no load time. No load time <laughs> talking about. Because no, no load time talking about it. That's the way it works, right? Yeah. So hopefully the stream's still alive because uh. Looks like something on uh, on the Facebook end pooped. Oh no! And I ha- and I and I forgot to. I hope you guys record. are watch. We hope you guys are watching us. Okay, well, if not, we can wrap up. Um, uh, so we'll we'll leave it. We'll we'll double check that uh, when we come back. But yeah, early December. Uh, Joe, the last thing that I that I wanted to uh, bring up was uh, PS Five Xbox sales in Japan. So uh, they both got released. Uh, at the same time and uh, the in the first few hours the PS5 sold 118,085 units in Japan <laughs> and in the same time the Xbox uh, combined X and S sold 20,534 units uh, I don't expect that number for Xbox to be much different anytime soon um as more playstation stuff starts dropping we'll see we'll probably see more of uh of that number growing but yeah xbox again not uh, being doing too great in japan as always uh spider-man did really well over there dude Eighteen thousand copies almost nineteen thousand copies and uh demon souls was right behind it so doing good in the good. in japan man Man, so here, so back for those of us in the states, or really just the world in general. What point are we going to get a PS4 price drop? Like, I mean, that that's something that's got to be I know imminent or pro price. Or pro. Oh yeah. my goodness, there's nothing for uh, Black Friday that I've seen. No, me regarding either. pricing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we'll yeah. see, man. That's nuts. Yeah, um, but that's what we got. Hopefully, our stream is still going on. I just checked. Here. Looks like we're good. Oh, good, good, good. Almost give me a heart attack because there was not going to be an audio version this week if that would have been the case uh, because of my criminal negligence um, but yeah that's what we got Joe uh, we're going to have a few days off uh, we're going to have some time off coming soon here as well um, hopefully I can catch up on uh, some shows Bloodborne and the such and uh, hopefully something good happens for you too man hopefully yeah, you're able bro. to snag one of these things we'll Again, see i'm not even su- i'm not even salty right because it's you know it is what it is i didn't pre-order so i'm trying to find whatever i can uh but at the same time it's frustrating because hey you know what i don't i'm not gonna scab this thing i really want to i want i want it because i want to enjoy it and it's really disappointing that they uh are not curating this cues and and this stuff enough where uh 
we're actual consumers are, are into by it. But uh, yeah, man, like we said at the beginning, no show next week. Um, but we will be back uh, the following week. Hopefully we'll have some news. It's a holiday week next week, but uh, we're hoping that, uh, that, that some other news drop. And maybe I'll find a PS5, who knows? Maybe that'll be my week. Uh, but in the meantime, Joel, go ahead and plug us in. Let's head out. Absolutely. Good people. No low time. Thank you for watching or listening to us. We really appreciate it. And uh, we ask you to stay connected. So make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed to our podcast, uh, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Spotify. We really appreciate you all staying with us there. Also, make sure that you're following No Low Time on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Of course, if you're watching on Facebook, you got our Facebook Live. So it's really worth, of course, becoming a fan on there, too. So that way you can put your notifications on and know when we got a live episode going and jump on with us. Uh, please feel free to send in any emails uh, with any questions or comments you might you might have for us. You know, maybe you've got some uh, strong opinions about some of the stuff we've said. Hey, you know, guys, I, I uh, think this one should have should be uh, front center in the game awards. I don't know. Uh, send an email to nolotime at gmail.com. That's no load time at gmail.com. Again, thank you all very much and have a great rest of your day and have a great Thanksgiving. Yep. Thank you guys. Stay safe out there. We will see you again next time.